kid. Seriously. Welcome to a defiant middle finger version of the Kid Seriously Show. This is the only podcast round where we're going to warn you that we have powerful friends. You're going to regret this. Every so often we get to d- together to discuss news in the realm of Star Wars and other parts of the world that tickle our fancy. We're going to answer some questions that Kid Seriously got and review an episode from the Clone Wars series. We're at week two without Mark as we soldier on, doing the best we can trying to keep it all together. A man who always keeps things together sits to my left. His name is Luke Neitzel. Let's see how he's doing. I I think I'm on your right. No, I, I mean politically. Oh, okay. That, that I, makes I'm, more sense. I'm shocked that it That's took good. you that long to get say. it because I always say that you're on my left. Oh, do you? Yeah, <laughs> first, apparently I was... And you're always on my right? Yeah. So I gotta pay more attention apparently well, to the intro. Or, or not. Maybe maybe you don't. Maybe everybody else is fast forward in I'm this so part, so... Focusing on on what a great show I'm gonna have that I don't listen to what you actually say. Yeah, so you're good. I am. I mean, stick to the script here. I am. It's Saturday. It is Saturday. We're we're recording late. Yeah, it's gonna be so timely then when it comes out. Like, <laughs> no, it's not because I because I wrote this on Thursday. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> so uh, for me, end of summer, uh, which I like because that means fall's coming. Fall is my favorite season, but in Wisconsin, that means winter is coming, and winter is not for wimps. So um, I hate that about here. Oh, I don't mind the, I don't mind the cold or the snow. I just mind the dark, from, like when it gets dark, when it's pitch black at four thirty yeah. in December. That that bothers me significantly more than any cold. Which is interesting because of your taste for horror. I think like everything would look like a horror movie. I think you'd you'd dig that a little bit. Well, yeah, but it just makes you tired when it's constantly dark and you don't see the sun. And I had a job that was in a cube. Where it oh, wasn't no. by a window, so you'd get there, you'd get to work and it was dark, and you'd leave work and it was dark, so it was, the lunch break was, was the dark. only time you saw sunlight. <laughs> well, talking about sunlight, let's get to the news and talk about a lady who is kind of a sunlight for both of us. <laughs> Kelly Marie Tran wrote an editorial article published by the New York Times detailing both what she went through during the online harassment and the aftermath of the release of The Last Jedi. In the article, Tran writes, Because the same society that taught some people they were heroes, uh, saviors, inheritors of the Manifest Destiny ideal, taught me I existed only in the background of their stories, doing their nails, diagnosing illnesses, supporting their love interests, and perhaps the most damaging, waiting for them to rescue, rescue me. After, and for a long time, I believed them. I believed those words, those stories, carefully crafted by a society that was built to uphold the power of one type of person, one sex, one skin tone, one existence. Tran went on to write, quote, These are the thoughts that run through my head every time I pick up a script or a screenplay or a book. I know the opportunity given to me is rare. I know that I now belong to a small group of privileged people who get to tell stories for a living. Stories that are heard and seen and digested by a world that for so long has tasted only one thing. I know how important that is, and I am not giving up. You might know me as Kelly, and the first woman of color to have a leading role in, in a Star Wars movie, and the first Asian woman to appear on the cover of Vanity Fair. My real name is Lauren, and I am just getting started. Luke, there's a lot to go over here, but for the first thing I'd like to ask you is, in a country that used to have far more prejudice against Irish, Italian, and Polish immigrants, what's the pathway to our country getting over its obsession with skin color? Is it possible at all, or do you believe it will be at best, only mitigated. Well, not in our lifetime. Are we going to... I mean, there's always going to be people that don't like people for well, yeah. whatever various reasons. I think it, it gets better as time goes on, you would hope, though I would think recently we're seeing a lot of people that we... expressing views that they previously thought they had to hide, but now they feel more empowered to not hide, which is disappointing. But, um, you know, we are certainly have made progress but we're light years away from where anyone ideally would want to be is that shocking to you you're what you're 37 right Mm -hmm. so half your life ago you were about to graduate high school how shocking is it to you now the world that we live in versus the world that we thought we were going to live in at the time you know i don't know but i'm going to dwell on the more positives because what what i have noticed and what i think about is uh you know i've I've talked about lgbtq things on here a decent amount as far as we talk about any of that stuff and when i was in high school in the 90s no kid would have ever admitted that that he was he or she was 
any of those things. You would have to hide that. And if you did admit it, you probably would have been physically harassed, verbally harassed, ostracized, etc. And I see kids nowadays and kids are out in high school. Kids are out in middle school and they're okay with it. I mean, there's still, there's still harassment and things that come to them. But just the fact that they feel comfortable doing it, and, and part of that is cultural, right? Like, they, they grew up with LGBTQ characters on TV, and they were more accustomed to them younger generations, so it wasn't as shocking to them as it was to maybe our generation and to generations before them, and now they're seeing more well-rounded ones that aren't just stereotypes and whatnot. So to them, you know, to that generation, there is, it, it's more normal. Right. And that's what we're hoping to see here. That's what we're hoping with the things she talked about is that kids will grow up not realizing that you there was a time when you only saw white actors portraying every single main role because that's the only thing they would hire. So we're working towards that, but it, it takes lifetimes upon lifetimes to get to get to the finish line. And there probably isn't an actual finish line because we'll we'll find something new to hate once we knock out all the other ones. It's surprising to me because in sixth grade, you know, I did a lot of research into the civil rights movement and I have long went through this idea that there was going to be a lot of progress and that we would live in much better times. And especially growing up that year was the, the year and I lived in Southern California at the time of the, uh, the, the Rodney King trial and the riots. And so there was a feeling like things were bad, but they were going to get better. There was always almost a unanimous feeling amongst the people that, that were in my life that you know what happened there was a huge injustice and that that was never going to happen again and and that sort of thing it seemed for a long time that race relations were better um and then this all happened within the last you know what four or five years where it's just been the outpouring and and i don't know i think we've talked about in the past maybe on the show even about how you know through social media people whose opinions have been shouted down for the stupidity that they are um, now feel like there's more of a community and uh, more racist that they can hang out with and, and band together with. And it, it just truly disgusts me. Um, it, what, what's incredibly shocking to me, too, is that when you look through periods of immigration, there's always this racism, whether it's, like I said, the, the Polish people, um, Irish, Germans. Um, but the ones that we seem to really hold on to are not religion, like the difference between the Catholics and Protestants. Or, or not, you know, difference in parts of Europe, but it's really down to literally skin color. And it just seems, I don't know, I've always thought it was just absolutely ridiculous because there are so many things that divide us, and that seems like such a simple thing to divide people. It just shocks me that it's, it's something that stupid. Um, I don't know, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm happy that you're taking, like, a positive attitude. I don't, I don't share that. I think you know from my comments. Um, but my hope is, you know, through things like media, through things like the Star Wars universe, hopefully, it, it's a better world for my daughter. But I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna place any bets on it. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is more specific to Kelly Marie Tran's character, and that's Rose Tico. Uh, Rose was a character that character that you and I both liked, and we both thought Tran did a great job with the character. Though we differed on the storyline of the character, what would you like to see? for her in the next movie and how big of a role do you think abrams has for her i think she'll have um a large role and i think the negative media or the not negative media but the negative things that have happened to her post then is only going to encourage them to give her a bigger role i'm not going to get into a specific storyline that i oh i'm gonna actually her. ask I'm, you to spitball but okay we'll, yeah we'll, we'll i don't there. i don't have a, a, an arc set up for her Don't in worry. my head you, you got so. about 30 to 45 seconds so okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean do you have a specific arc you will have plotted out for her no but i'm that i'm the one asking the questions so. oh okay <laughs> i n- no i i don't because i don't even know what the arc of this movie is sure. gonna be about to be honest because like many people if you had told me last jedi was the end of the storyline i would find it a satisfying conclusion right. like i feel like it wrapped things up so i really don't know what they're going to do with any of them i think to that's be i think that's the best part about going into episode 9 and and one of the things that i i do like about the last jedi is where it puts us here at the end going into the third one is really you know, JJ was was really critiqued, and and some would say fairly about about how formulaic uh, the Force Awakens was. 
um, now it's kind of carte blanche. You know, we can he can kind of do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to wrap up a lot of things. He doesn't have to answer for a lot of things. So, um, you know, I, I think for for me, if I was making the decision on Rose Tico, I would like to have some sort of story that calls back to the sacrifice that her sister made in some way that's where i would begin so like you've got i would make it about her and her sister and the idea of sacrifice because that's what her sister's character i mean we only saw her for a short time so i'd like something to do with that and that's where i would start so you want her to die is what you're saying no i don't want her to... <laughs> i don't want her to die but i do think that she'll have to sacrifice something i don't know all, all good stories are have something you know along those lines so that's what i would that's what i would do nice you got anything you got anything more i, I don't i still don't have a plotted out storyline right. for her i apologize all right we better get to uh <laughs> am i right or am i wrong hey it's time for raven and just incredible's favorite game show it's am i right or am i wrong because mark is gone we cannot bring you the full-fledged full monty firestorm so we've adapted the rules for single match only this week the training continues Buoyed by an excellent performance last week, Luke has decided to complete my training and make me more powerful than I could ever imagine. Personally, I think he's just fattening me up for the slaughter. Nevertheless, Luke Neitzel, are you ready to take the reins once again? Always. Are you ready? No, I'm not, but I gotta win. I gotta go. All right, well, yeah, you know, gotta beat yourself here. That's right. (laughs) So, for, for me, this starts out on sad news. Okay. Because I'm a Danny Boyle fan, I'm a James Bond fan, and they broke up. And I think that is devastating because that was some of the most exciting James Bond news to to come out. That he was, Danny Boyle was going to direct the next installment, and now he has left over creative differences. And this is a franchise to me that I have, I've seen every single one, and... I uh, think it's gotten really, really stale over the last few. I, Casino Royale may be my favorite one, yeah. but they didn't even come close in the, the remaining Craig ones. Like, I like Skyfall, Quantum but not as much Solace. as everyone else. Yeah, Quantum of Solace isn't good. I thought, at least it was short, though, mm-hmm. where Spectre was uh, just as boring, but three times as long. And predictable. I love Skyfall, but I, I, I thought Casino Royale was better. I like Skyfall uh, when I saw it, but I think it is a very hard rewatch, where Casino Royale is one I can put in endlessly. Mm. This is the first movie I ever got on, on Blu-ray. Oh, was it? Yeah. Nice. That's a pretty good one, though. Yeah, it was just, just like, like at the beginning when it's in black and white and he becomes 007. It was just... Oh, yeah. That, that, that was awesome. So, we can't really focus on what's going to happen with this new Danny Boyle movie. That isn't coming out anymore. Sorry, so dude. now you need to tell me what your favorite Danny Boyle movie is and why it should be mine. And in case you need a reminder, <laughs> I listed out what his movies are. Oh, thank them. heavens. All right. Because so I'm not good at this. Okay. Like, the, the movies, like, in-depth stuff. All right. So this is this is his filmography of non-TV movies sure. and shorts and whatnot. Welcome. So starting out with Shallow Grave. <laughs> I love that movie. I saw that movie in a sociology class at the University of Minnesota. Nice. Yep. Then Train Spotting. Uh, then a life less ordinary, then the beach, twenty eight days later, millions, sunshine, slumdog millionaire, one hundred and twenty seven hours, Frankenstein, trance, Steve Jobs, Train Spotting two. So, I haven't seen many of the movies on the list, including Slumdog Millionaire, which I should really see. So that's probably going to lose me this point. But Train Spotting was one of the most important movies of my teenage life because it dealt with um, addiction, which was a huge problem in my family growing up. It dealt with trying to break free of a life that you didn't want to be in, which was a huge issue for me as I made my way into college. And so I can't tell you that it has to be your favorite, but Train Spotting to me meant the most. And it was um, it was a movie that I really took to heart, and it, it reminded me of the situation that I was in at the time. Not, I mean, I wasn't using heroin, um, but um, just trying to break free of the mold. And then you 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 leave. In my case, I'd go to Minneapolis, and then keep getting drawn back into your old life and the drama and those sorts of things. So um, I'm not gonna ask you to be it, have it be your favorite movie, but when you watch it, just remember that it's mine. I'm sorry, the question told you you're supposed to tell me why it no, should well, be mine. It's fine. Uh, but I'll still give you a point because it, if you would have made a case for 28 Days Later or Train Spotting, I would have been fine with. I like 28 Days 
more, but it's more my genre. It's, and it, and I haven't seen it, and it's I've seen part of it, and then I got interrupted, and it's so good, and then I need to go back. And well, watch and it. it it changed the that that was a dead like zombies were a dead thing back when that came out, and that was the first one where they ran fast, which seems now you know it mm. seems basic and simplistic, but at the time it was revolutionary, and that brought that genre back and now it's everywhere Every, I, I, as I, you're I'm, talking all i can think of is bigby saying some lies you just got glass and no one leaves till we find the blank who did it who the fuck are you and they just kicks the dude in the nuts it's great no train spotting's awesome so not not a bad answer i'll give you the point on that thank you all right so we all as always we have to talk a little soccer yes but it's too painful to talk about the fire right now so we're just <laughs> yes. gonna we're just yes. gonna push that aside and pretend they're they're not there um and we'll be happier that way right so this week in MLS, it is this weekend. It is MLS rivalry weekend. So all the big rivalries, exactly. That was uh, yesterday. One one draw. Uh, that that went on. So it's it's the best weekend of matchups. Uh, sometimes I wish they spread them out, but it does make for a really awesome weekend. So we're not going to include the fire. Plus, you'd lose the point if you you picked fire crew anyway. Right. But what MLS rivalry do you enjoy watching the most? Earthquakes Galaxy. Really. Yep. That was, I mean, I, I was a Galaxy fan for a long time, or not, not a long time, but like for a couple years beforehand. Um, I am a rival to Mark Neitzel in everything that comes with sports. It's the most fun. I love the fact that he kind of likes the, the Warriors enough to uh, make it a thing. Like, I just love being rivals with Mark Neitzel, and I've always kind of enjoyed that rivalry because the, the Earthquakes have a rich history, and so do the Galaxy, and, um, you know, there is none for the fire. Uh, and for DC United, I really never got into any of the rivalries. Uh, you know, DC United would be the other team that I that I like. And so for me, it's Galaxy Earthquakes. And and LAFC isn't hasn't been around for that to mean anything. They're you know doing great, but um, for me, it's Galaxy Earthquakes all the way. Yeah, you're wrong. Okay. Uh, it it's it's Red Bull New York versus NYCFC because mm-hmm. it it packs those stadiums in. The games are always crazy and high scoring. I watched it a couple days ago, and they were. They, they're, I mean, there's multiple instances of fights almost breaking out. Like, it's it's not quite Avalanche Red Wings of the 90s, but it has way more intensity than you get in any other of the I, rivalry, and just I so we're love ab- watching so it. So we're absolutely clear, I couldn't care less about NYFC, NYCFC or Red Bull New York. I, like, I think they're blah teams, and I... I'm okay with losing this point. Oh man, you don't like watching fun soccer. That would be my. <laughs> well, I'm a fire fan. I'm a fire That's fan. True. So. That's true. So, since we're talking sports, mm-hmm. let's transition to a sport that we never ever talk about. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna talk boxing. Okay. Okay. Yep. So when you're training for boxing, one of the most important things you need is a good punching bag. Okay. Sure. And I can. Oh I, oh, I know all about that. I've been you and your brother's punching bag for about eighteen years. Perfect. Well, you know, and I can't think of a better punching bag. Maybe, maybe you are a better punching bag. But the only other better punching bag I can think of is DCU Comics being made into films. <laughs> so. That's that nice. That's a good thank you. For, for some reason or another, we're getting another separate Joker movie with Why Joaquin not? Phoenix, unrelated to the Jared Leto Joker that we we got in the Academy <laughs> Award winning Suicide Squad. So I think it's pretty fair to say that Batman has the best stable of comic book villains. Sure. And the Joker is the best yes. of those. But who is the second best of the Ooh, Batman of the villains? Batman villains? This was never my belief until you and I started talking about it, but I really like Mr. Freeze. I think I went I went back and watched those animated series episodes that you had discussed and um he's got a very, very heart wrenching tale. He's kind of a cool character in the animated series and in the comics, obviously not in the movie. Um but uh, he he has just a cool way about him and a kind of a cool power and it makes things difficult, it makes it entertaining to uh to, to watch in the story and i think there's just a lot of stuff for good stories with mr freeze um i also love catwoman i've always loved you catwoman. have to pick one gonna, no it's mr freeze okay and that's a good choice to pick because my answer was mr freeze and batman the animated series okay so, there we go. well done you may have had a, some insider knowledge on that one but, well hey no i mean you legitimately changed my mind as far as like like he was kind he's of average there. for me and he that that's those are probably some of the best episodes. I like, I really oh, for like sure. Two Face, the Two Face arc in that show too is phenomenal. All right, so that is a two out of three. So we're heading into question four. All right, you're looking pretty strong. 
And we're going to keep it with DC, because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So, I had to travel a lot this week, and yes. I get very bored in hotel rooms and right. just flip through. But luckily on TNT, <laughs> I got to watch... I just said that name! I got to watch, yeah, Batman vs. Superman. Oh, gee, and you sent me a beautiful text. Too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I was going to say, you know this, because I, I taped on my phone Ben Affleck screaming, Why did you say that name? And then and texted to you from my hotel room. Um, and then you responded to me, so I'm going to kind of steal what, okay, what sure. you asked me when you responded. So, this scene in any type of these movies is probably the most reviled, mm-hmm. the, the Martha thing. What what would be the next most, most reviled scene in any of these, you know, comic book, nerd culture type movies? Okay, so... I thought you were going to flip it and say what would be like the most underground like low like appreciated scene. No. And I was going to go two fighters against a star destroyer. No. <laughs> um so I'll have to think here for comic book movies the most reviled it pains me to say this cuz I think they're two really cool characters but the one that immediately jumps to mind is Black Widow and the Hulk with the whole sun getting pretty low and um I think either that or the entire Daredevil movie, um, but I'll go with uh, I'll go with uh, that in, in uh, Age of Ultron. All right. Well, unfortunately, that is not correct. You were you were close. Okay. And this is this is going to seem a little odd though because I think both of us actually like this, okay. but most people do not like this. That's unusual for us. And it's the Mandarin in Iron Man. Oh, I love it. Is that? Yeah, yeah you're, you're right. Both, you're we right. both enjoyed that, but yeah. everyone else hates yeah. that. So. Maybe that adds to my enjoyment. A teacher? (laughs) (laughs) You didn't care about Iron Man. Stop pretending you cared about Iron Man comics. No, no, everyone. No, not you. I know, I know, but everyone was super into him before those movies. So then (laughs) then screwing the Mandarin up really ruined a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah, almost as many lives as Luke Skywalker did. Pretty much. So Pearl Jam continues to be my favorite band as yes. we head into question five. And last weekend I went and saw them for the 13th time Congratulations. over at uh, Wrigley Field. And, you know, whether you love or hate the Cubs, which we are on both sides of that statement, Wrigley's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's it's historic. It's something everyone has to see if you're a sports fan. Um, and anytime you can hang out in a baseball park like that, you know you're going to have a good time. So we've both been to a decent amount of ballparks across the nation. What is your go-to food while you're at a baseball stadium? Dodger Stadium, Dodger Dog. That's that's the one that I've been to the most. That's the one. That's the stadium. Even though Wrigley Field is awesome, growing up in Southern California, I was still a Cubs fan, but I was also a Dodger fan, and I went to that stadium all the time. My dad would always get me a Dodger Dog, and that just there's something about coming up over the steps, looking down onto the greenness of the field as the sun is setting, and those white uniforms with the Dodger Dog in your hand with the blue just popping. Dodger Stadium, Dodger Dog. See that, and and it's a good answer, but the blue would have popped even more with some nachos. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. You're not gonna get the point on that yep, one. The yeah. answer was definitely nachos. Yeah. That's that's what you get at the movies. That's what you get anywhere. Nachos are the way. Over to go. over popcorn, really. I don't like popcorn. What the hell's the matter with you? Hey, you get the like the sh- the seed like mm-hmm. casing stuck in your throat. Mm-hmm. I hate that. So it's just not worth it. I like the smell of popcorn. Plus, I worked at a movie theater, and the stuff that yeah, people no, stop, did to the stop, popcorn. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Nope. Don't get the popcorn there. That's all I'm going to say. So, I have breaking news. Oh, okay? And the breaking break- news from today, or breaking news from when we were originally going to... No, it's it's just... It's so hot. It's, okay. it's unbelievable. I'm from Minnesota, and I'm super proud of it. Okay. So, that's the breaking news. <laughs> you are wearing a shirt that says St. Paul. I am wearing a shirt that says St. Paul right now. I'm so, wearing sure this is Wisconsin, so deal with that. Woo. Woo. Oh, yeah, I thought you were from L.A. or whatever. Anyway. I'm also from L.A. <laughs> yeah. I have a multiple choice background. <laughs> so one of the greatest athletes in the history of Minnesota sports is uh, retired as of uh, a week ago. Lindsay Wade? Af- yep, four titles. She's from Hutchinson. She's a Golden Gopher great. She's going to be a WNBA Hall of Famer. She's now going to be the head coach of the Gopher women's basketball team. It's a nice get for them. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and that, you know, it's she's from Hutchinson. She's someone who means a lot to the state, and means a lot to sports, and we don't get a lot of winning professional teams. So good on her for helping to lead the links to all those those titles. Now, I was a go for myself, and you were for a period of time. Yep. I uh, did not graduate from the University of Minnesota. We were there when she was there. Yep, which is pretty cool. Um, 
So I, I think you got to put her up there with like Kirby Puckett, Kevin Garnett, Randy Moss, Neil Broughton, all those kind of Minnesota sport greats that jump to your mind when you think about it. Yeah. So my question to you is, is if, if I say your favorite or greatest female athlete, who jumps out at you? Serena Williams. Serena Williams has been the most dominant performer in any particular sport across any landscape in any time period. She's the she's the greatest women's tennis player. She is to women's tennis what Jerry Rice is to the wide receiver position in that, like, well, I guess there are some more that were close now, but growing up there was nobody even comparable. Serena Williams, and it's not even close. Like, you talk about Steffi Graf, not even, like, Monica Salt, like, come on. Like, Chris Everett, that's a joke. Mar- Martina Navratilova is the only person who could like even hold a candle to her and that's still not close it's serena williams yeah uh, okay okay uh this is a real tough one because uh, i don't disagree with what you said as far as her being the probably the greatest female athlete or whatever but i was a kid when steffi graf was playing oh god so, oh god so you know just just personally to me that was oh, the, the first great female tennis <laughs> player oh, that i watched so Sorry, you're not going to get the point. I also had Michelle Akers written down. Did you do well, have too. Steffi Graf in there? You're a damn mm-hmm. fool. I'm not saying she's you, better. You didn't even spell Steffi Graf right. Just oh, I don't me. care. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I ever care about I'm that? I'm pissed off about that question because you are... We picked, oh. the, we picked the same sport and you're wrong. Again, I'm not... I don't disagree with anything you said. <laughs> Serena Williams is better. I just what said... What is the question? What, what the... female athlete had the biggest impact on you? Oh, okay. Oh, I, oh I totally wrong. yeah. Biggest biggest impact on me. I'm gonna go re-answer the question even though I got it wrong because I misunderstood it. Well, just re-answer it saying Michelle Akers or Steffi Graf because that's what's written down. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna get the point on this one. Um, my favorite tennis player growing up that was Monica Seles, by the way. Um, biggest impact on me. All I'll say about the Celis versus Graf thing is Celis's fans don't care enough about her to stab Graf. So, <laughs> I will say, you know what? It, my answer would have had to be, it would have been Monica Celis, which would also made me lose a point. Sure. I watched more tennis. Like when I went to go stay with my mom um, for a couple weeks in the summertime, like it was always during Wimbledon, so I'd always watch uh, both, you know, men's and women's tennis, and I watched more Monica Celis than than anything else so I'd, i lost the point there if i you did so you need this this mm-hmm. next one this what's is the, key the it's three three so it's it's all coming down to this what was going this into seven. seven this is question seven holy crap all right yep yep so we're gonna Steffi Graf. but the thing is is we're gonna go into your favorite overall she was the topic. enemy like Steffi graph was the villain as far as i was concerned that's interesting i guess that makes sense with this I'm stuck on that question. I didn't really. Well, get your head, get your I... head right, man. <laughs> I can't. I'm okay. distracted. I'm distracted. On. I'm on the ropes. <laughs> get yourself into here. You really need this, okay? All right. All right. In fact, actually, <laughs> we're gonna go into your favorite topic. Oh no! Of all time, no. so you, this should give you a leg up, okay? Oh gosh. And it is cele- your... celebrity couples, because <laughs> we know how much you love a good Us Weekly. <laughs> So that you can find out the goings on, yes. of who's dating who, and I love it so you know much. how they make their relationships work, who might be cheating with the nanny, all that that type right. of good stuff. So, Ariana Grande, oh yes, your your favorite singer. She's not my favorite singer. But second favorite singer is engaged <laughs> to that dorky looking dude I from saw from Saturday Pete. Night Live. Pete, oh, is he? Yeah, oh, he's on Saturday Night Live. Pete oh, Davidson. I, I know none of this. Okay, keep going. Yeah, yeah, he is a kind of a goofy looking guy. Or whatever, but you know he's on Saturday Night Live, so yeah. he's doing something well. And now, she loves him, so that's good for him. Yeah. Exactly. And Saturday Night Live has had, you know, it's one of the longest running shows of all time, right. and it has had been a, a career launcher for uncountable number of stars. Yeah. So who on Saturday Night Live all time was the best talent on Saturday Night Live? And when I say best talent, I mean while they were on Saturday Ooh, Night Live. So, so you can't hard. you can't say Robert Downey Jr. and get right. a point because he was bad on Saturday Night Live, even though he's great out of it. So, who is the MVP? Do I want Saturday Night Live? Do I do I want to stick to my guns and use my favorite, or do I want to try to win? <sighs> and I will say this is a this is a definite. There's there's one correct answer. Okay, so. The answer that I think that it should be is Eddie Murphy, but I think that's before our time, and I think you wouldn't pick him because you'd think more to when we were growing up. So I think 
while there are many, it comes down to so much with taste. And I'm torn between Sandler and um, what's his name? I can't. Will uh, Farrell. But I'm going to go with neither of those. I'm going to go with Norm Macdonald because I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to lose this, but I'm going to stick to my favorite dude. And that was Norm Macdonald. And that's what I'm going with. Well, first with. off, I'm insulted that you would think I would write an answer where Adam Sandler was picked as the Adam MVP Sandler at the, no, at the time, at the time, Adam Sandler was on Cloud9. The, the answer is Eddie Murphy. Oh, well, <laughs> my God. I didn't think you, I didn't it's think not you, even close. I didn't think you would go backwards oh, in time like no, that. No, so we watched Saturday Night Live, old episodes of Saturday Night Live growing up, because they were on Comedy Central or okay, whatever. Yeah. So, no, we, we watched all of them, and no one has been Murphy better on that show than yeah. Eddie Murphy. I mean, he is he is the... I'm the glad that I that I really so would have gotten the right. You had answer, it if you would have just gone with fine. your heart, man. Do you like Ariana Grande and go with your heart, and it just would have been fine. So I am sorry to say that's right. that it did not work out this time, but that's okay. This was just a sparring match to get you ready. Maybe we'll do a, a number one contender match soon for the, is the your, actual is shot Mark at the back title next week. I believe so. Okay, so we'll have to factor him into the thing. Let's get to uh, questions that kids seriously got. Javier writes, what Star Wars property besides Episode Nine are you looking forward to most? Oh, uh, the Ryan Johnson. Oh, yeah. The Ryan Johnson trilogy. I loved Last Jedi. I thought it was amazing. I've loved everything Ryan Johnson has done that I've seen. I haven't seen Brothers Bloom, so I don't know how that is. But um, I And I love the idea of him just not having to be bound by really anything else. Getting to do whatever he wants. The Benioff and Weiss thing is exciting, but you don't know who's directing or yeah. any of that. So there, there's some questions in the air about that. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not. The TV shows don't do a lot for me. Um, I like the prospect of an Obi Wan movie, but who knows if that's happening? I mean, Ewan McGregor says it's not, but um, no, it's it's definitely the Ryan Johnson, and I'm I actually probably looking more forward to the Ryan Johnson than I am Episode Nine. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd say for me, it's Episode Nine. I mean, that's all the question is, but. Um, and I, I am excited for Ryan Johnson's. I think I think I'm really excited for the TV show though, the Favreau one. Yeah, because I, I you really seemed so wanted... down on it last week though. Uh, yeah, I just uh, but the more I think about it, the more I think that that was the uh, um, the the meeting for like people like Reed Moreno um, that she had with uh, with Kathleen Kennedy, mm -hmm. and I think she's going to be one of the directors. And I and if they're doing that, they're they're bringing the heat on this. Well, so, the, the rumor is she's going to do the Supergirl movie now. Oh, really? Yeah. That just, you just rumor What today. is with you bringing it back to DC? You're always coming back to DC. That's right. It all comes back to <laughs> terrible DC movies. Though I would hope that one would be no. good. Uh, yeah, I really like Reed Moreno, so I'm, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'll go with. But, I mean, I kind of like, I kind of like it all, you know. Um, Even if there's a hundred Bubba Fett's fighting? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. God, God damn it. <laughs> Could be good. Yeah. All right, should we, uh, let's talk about season two, episode six, Weapons, the the wonderfully named Weapons Factory. Oh, is that what it's named? <laughs> That's what it's called. Well, you know, it, it's not, it's not wrong. No, it's so, not wrong. Uh, no gift is more precious than trust. Written by Brian Larson and directed by Giancarlo Volpe, this episode continues the invasion of Geonosis, um, and the Republic aims to destroy the Separatist weapons factory and have a battle with some hardcore tanks. Luke, take it away. So the narration opens, and it's a recap, basically, of what happened last time, and I was caught off guard, because I thought that was a one-time story and was done, because it basically looked like everyone surrendered mm. at the end of the last episode. But the droid factory is still pumping out droids, even though... The Republic has the entire rest of the planet kind of uh, on lockdown. And we have uh, Luminaria coming back to help join. Yeah. Because if you recall, uh, Kiati and Obi-Wan had to be taken off because they were injured. So she comes in with her Padawan. And you you liked uh, Luminara quite a bit. That was, she comes from your favorite episode, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, a, that is a very good one. Um, 
Yeah, and I like that Ventress beat the crap out of her, basically, is actually what I liked. But she now has a Padawan named uh, Barris, yes. who lands with her, and they are there to uh, to go in, and, and they go and land, and they meet up with Anakin and Ahsoka. Ahsoka's trying to prep some troops to get them ready, but Anakin keeps interrupting her, and it's really pissing her off. Hated, not to interrupt you, but I hated the fact that this was another hologram planning scene. Because yeah, they had just done that, yeah. And it's like, we're in, it was like the exact same thing that they did in the last episode. Now that I think about it, now it's the same thing, but Ahsoka's like leading it. Maybe it's a lot cooler than I gave it credit on the original uh, watch, but I'm sorry. No, it's Continue. okay. So they're bickering a bunch. She doesn't think that uh, Anakin trusts her, and Luminara and Barris meet up with a uh, Anakin and Ahsoka who just are fighting fighting fighting. What's what's your take on that? Like how did you react emotionally to them bickering? Cuz you know, I think for in a kids show like you, you kind of take the kids side. But for me, I was like Padawan, know your role. Like shut up. Oh, see, I was more just annoyed with the whole concept of this cuz we've been through this. Yeah. Before and it's we've also been through opposite scenarios where he's just like take control of everything, do whatever, and then she got a bunch of bombers killed. And run through. So I, I kind of felt like when they started doing this, it was a retread mm-hmm. that got me down. So I, I honestly didn't get emotionally invested enough in it to pick a side. I was just wanted it, it to be done. And that may summarize some of my thoughts moving forward on this one in, wow. in general. Wow. We are going to really disagree. Oh, are we? Yeah. So we need to... Like, brace yourself. Oh, man. Wow, two weeks in a row. <laughs> so they, they need to go and destroy this place and there's basically there's a drawbridge they have to get across to go to go in there and blow it up so lumina and that's going to be very hard to get across so luminar and barris want to go through underneath these the building in these catacombs to get to the droid factory because barris has memorized they've had her memorize the entire layout of the catacombs which that sounded to me like something that the jedi would make the pad the padawans do is just give them a map and be like you memorize this while i just hang out on the flight (laughs) over so she she has that all done um, and they want to place bombs in those tunnels then, and, and then they can blow up the factory basically from the bottom and have it collapse. So Luminar wants the two Padawans to go in, which was an odd choice to me why you wouldn't go with your Padawan to do that, but they, they want to send the plot needed it. So they want to send the two Padawans in there and then Anakin and Luminara are going to distract everyone else. Send, so they're not focusing on them in the tunnels and Anakin doesn't want Ahsoka to go because he doesn't think she's up to it. One of the things that I really liked about this is it, the theme of this episode really puts Ahsoka and Anakin into like the naughty Jedi camp, and then you have Luminara and Barris who are like doing things the right way, and they're the sort of like serene that you know, like this the, the the group that's kind of like in they're in line with each other and the way that it's supposed to be. And I think it's interesting not just from a narrative perspective, but also given the tragic way that this story is eventually has to end with Anakin turning to the dark side, and who knows what happens with Ahsoka. And so I, I know, oh, well, well. <laughs> you're a dick. Keep going. Uh, so the Padawans head out into the tunnel, and Anakin and Luminara decide just to march up the middle of that drawbridge for their just their uh, their distraction. Definitely a diversion. Yeah, they definitely want to attack. And the droid facility is at 50% capacity, but it still has a large droid army to send out there and fight. So we get a big ground battle, basically, between the clones and Anakin and Luminara versus the droids who come out there. But, as Admiral Akbar likes to point out, it's a trap. Poggle has troops positioned behind the clones. So they jump out, and now the clones are surrounded and fighting from both sides. Meanwhile, the Padawans are sneaking through the tunnel, which is filled with, like, a couple sleeping Geonosians. But really, one Geonosian wakes up and kind of starts to follow their trail to go get them. Poggle has a secret weapon, as well, that he's about to unleash, and it is 20 super tanks, which are just bigger tanks with better armor. Uh, but they're going to, in a in a big the big clone cannons have no effect on them because they have ray shields, apparently. I don't know why they don't make everything with ray shields, but they apparently stop it all. They make the whole plane out of the black box material. (laughs) What is the deal? (laughs) They also also fire their blasters very fast. Like, you can rapid fire, which you don't really see Star Wars vehicles have rapid fire on there. So they send those tanks out there, and they just start decimating the clone army. And Anakin makes a plan to draw them onto the bridge and then blow the bridge up. And that, that plan works, and it sends all the, the super tanks crashing down into the canyon. 
Now, the Geonosian that has followed the Padawans reports to Poggle that they've finished planning the, the bombs and are now trapped... And but, but they're now trapped fighting in the control room where they planted all these bombs, so they can't just sneak out and escape. So a fight breaks out, and there is one of the best droid commander deaths ever, where he's basically, what, standing next to the bomb? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, ha ha ha, fool! <laughs> yeah, and it just blows up. So that was, that was highly entertaining. That was the highlight of the episode for me. Um, there's also a super tank in there that's fighting with them, and Ahsoka gets knocked unconscious. And Barris is able to cut her way into the super tank, and then Ahsoka comes out of it, and they take control, uh, but the bombs have already been taken away. So they can't use the bombs any, anymore. So their only option to take this facility down is to basically blow up the power generator with the tank. And that'll destroy the facility, but also they're in there, and they aren't going to be able to run away like they could with the bombs. So Ahsoka radios Anakin, and she gets kind of a wavy message through to Anakin to say there's no way out, but they're going to do it anyway, and he doesn't want her to... Um, but they do it and they destroy the facility and Luminara and Anakin can sense that they're still alive, but they know they're buried under the rubble and they're going to run out of air very soon. So the clone ships start working on digging out the Padma Padawans and Luminara is very ready just to concede, Hey, they're going to die. Like you have to, That's you have good. to be ready for that. Um, and Anakin has having none of that, which harkens back to his, you know, fear of losing things and his attachments and all that and how that leads to the dark side. Um, in the tunnel, Ahsoka's able to use uh, create a tracking signal so Anakin can find her using some kind of MacGyver tools she finds lying around before they start to pass out from the lack of air. But Anakin and Luminara are able to pick up that signal and basically able to force move all the rubble in time to free them so that they get out. And then uh, Anakin basically tells Luminaria that, you know, uh, you never should have given up on them and I refuse to believe she was gone. And Luminari kind of responds that, you know, she wasn't trying to give up on him, but she she's willing to let her Padawan go if it's her Padawan's time. And Anakin's obviously not. And that is how we, we come come to an end. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I found this Anakin-Ahsoka relationship to be a retread that I thought we kind of had moved beyond. It didn't add anything new to either character. It just kind of brought them back to where they were. This episode also felt kind of rushed and broken into parts because you have this whole dramatic battle about breaking the thing but really the more pressing story matter is them being trapped under rubble so it it, it felt like two episodes that they decided to make one episode and they just crammed them together so that it's not a horrible episode if you wandered into this it's it's certainly not any episode that has padme in it bad <laughs> but it it to me it was just it, it was just a blah another episode this is my favorite episode of the entire series. Really? Thus far. Okay. This is my absolute both seasons? favorite. Both seasons. This beats out rookies. It's number one. It's number one overall. And I like it because, yes, it is a retread about something that's been going on, but it puts the relationship into the two most important characters of the show, in my opinion, versus what they should be. And it shows how they're not the norm and that there's something wrong with Anakin and Ahsoka. And if it had ended with just them blowing up the weapons factory, and if it had ended right there, it would have been probably my favorite cartoon episode ever. And wow. Then, and then they had gone, you know, and done the first part in the next episode. Um, I loved the visuals of it. I loved the sounds of it. I love having Luminara. I love the Barris character. Perfect opposite of Ahsoka. She really made it feel like there were stakes because you didn't know if she was going to live or die. And so I could have foreseen Barris dying, but Ahsoka barely making it. We've already seen uh, Kiari Mundi and uh, and and uh, Obi-Wan already like gravely injured in this whole thing. So, um, you know, it was it was a whole arc with a lot of a lot of stakes to it compared to what we normally have. And I thought the way that they they shot the weapons manufacturing facility blowing up was probably the best visual that they've done in the entire series thus far yeah wow see and i thought the visuals on the last episode were significantly better than they this were, episode yeah see I, I thought they were good but i i didn't think they were as good wow i'm sorry your favorite I, I overall i no, I, mean, overall. I you know i could i could un, i i get you saying like i really liked it or whatever but i'm shocked that it would be your your favorite 
I thought overall. about I, th- I thought about rookies and you know because it was uh, originally I was like okay where does this rank you know rookies is the best episode previous to this and for me the themes in this are stronger um, you know there's the the attention to detail is maybe better in rookies but like the storyline is better and as you get to know these characters they mean more to you and and it, maybe that's the the point of rookies um, but but for me it was it was these these are the characters that I care about most in the show thus far, and it puts them in a place that makes sense not just in the in the season, not just in the storyline, not just in this Clone Wars series, but in their overall story in the whole franchise. And and I and yes, there it's a bit of a retread in the beginning, but it's about five minutes of that, and I think then it becomes something far more special. Hmm. I'm so sorry that I disappointed you. I yeah, I just I yeah, I can't say I saw that coming to be honest because I just it's one I watched and man, I really had to rely on my notes because I I forgot it almost immediately <laughs> after I watched it. <laughs> well, like you always say, art is subjective and things hit us in different ways. And yeah, that's true. This hit me really. I mean, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. All right. How, well, how many pews? One pew, maybe? Uh, no, two. Because, like you said, it's not horrible. It's just. It's just another episode for me. Mm. Um, so it's not, you know, like One Pew is reserved for Padme episodes and Jar Jar <laughs> episodes and things that make me mad mm-hmm. when I watch them. Like, this didn't make me mad while I watched it. I just didn't, I, it didn't hook me the way it hooked you. Mm-hmm. So Who are the characters that you care about most in the show? Like, oh, Ahsoka's my favorite character like, yeah. in all that show. And part of that is based on me knowing where she goes. Mm-hmm. If I had never watched the series, I don't know if I would be as attached to her as I am currently so there's no real way for me to to say um and then after that i i probably like obi-wan the best out of them um this is a better representation to me of anakin than we get in any of the prequel movies but he's still he, he's still not he's still not the best character by any means i don't think they've i don't think they've gone really to where i wanted him to go like he's just not he's not rebellious enough mm-hmm for the way I felt it was built up in the original trilogy of, of doing his own thing. like, Or even when they, in the prequels, when they talk about like the Clone Wars and all the things he's done, he seems like he would be more kind of off the map and all over the place just doing whatever. And we've gotten a little of that, but I don't feel like we've gotten nearly enough for me to love his characterization so far. Fair enough. Well, it's about that time. Should we get to the other nerd news that we're talking about this week? Let's do it. I'm a nerd. We have news for the beautiful people. There's a lot more of us in our view. Hey, Luke. Hey, what? It's that time of year again. Mm-hmm. The grills are being put away. Back to school shopping is ramping up. But it's also that perfect time during the football season where every NFL team thinks they have a chance. And perhaps, more importantly, every rookie NFL quarterback is getting work. Only been through a couple changes like this in the past, okay? Because my favorite team is the Packers and went from Favre to Rodgers. There hasn't been a lot of high quarterback draft picks, and things have been very steady. So as a former middle school quarterback and flag football champion, I've always loved the quarterback position, and I like to watch these young guys to figure out which ones will be good and which ones won't with none of the stakes because it's usually not my team. This year, we have five guys taken in the first round, and the fan bases for all of them are pretty sure that their Messiah has arrived. Even Browns fans? Especially Browns oh, fans. I figured they'd be just well, assume everything's yeah. going to go horribly wrong. Well, now that they're in hard knocks, like the entire nation waits with bated breath for everything that they're going to say. Like the, the world is a Browns fan. Well, the world is that offensive line coach who hates stretching and <laughs> his well, whole body he... vibrates when he talks. And it, <laughs> I can't tell if it's hypnotizing or horrible. <laughs> Well, in any event, so you got number one, you got Baker Mayfield of the Browns. First overall, he's going to back up to Rod Taylor. Um, got he was the Bills guy last year, Taylor, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Now, back in Oklahoma, this is the dude who got in trouble for everything. Like, he ran away from the cops and then got beat up by the cops. He, um, like, some Kansas players wouldn't shake his hand, so he was yelling at them from the sideline and grabbing his crotch. Like, he planted the OU flag in the middle of... Um, Ohio State <laughs> states. Uh, I have no problem with that, right? No, it's especially given these these recent <laughs> events. Um, also, like he's basically Jim McMahon to the extreme. Like that's like who he personifies. But he walked on at two schools, 
And um, I always like air raid quarterbacks. Um, Mike Leach is one of my favorite coaches. And he was kind of like a surprise at number one, so you'd think that like I would love this dude, but he's super irritating. <laughs> um, he, he had a picture this week where it was like him shirtless with like a tiger and like a Rolls Royce, I think it was. That sounds amazing. So, it's, it's not my team. So I just like going. him a lot better now. Yeah. So um, he's kind of shaky. I mean, he's like... He had some good gains at the beginning, and he played really badly last night or the night before. What's his line like? What's that? What's his line like? His, o- his O-line. Oh, um, they've spent a lot of money to repair things. Now, obviously, they lost Joe Thomas. Like, the greatest. Yeah. He, he retired, but um, it's so-so. I mean, they, they spent okay. a lot of money in free agency. So, that's... So, it's not like he's getting, you know, the pass rushes straight on him yeah. every single play. No, but what I do like about him is he's always moving his feet. The best football players, when, when Kraft gets crazy, they'll move their feet faster, mm-hmm. and he does that. So, The second quarterback from my school, my other school. Which, okay. The the other other that school. You just said my school, and I thought of like five. I know. Right? Immediately <laughs> that it could possibly be from. So this, I'm going to guess USC yes. because – I don't think too many quarterbacks come out of George Mason, George Mason, or <laughs> the Lobos, or or Wisconsin, or Wisconsin for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Sam Darnold, he was gonna be like the trending number one pick. He's for the Jets. Seventy three percent of his passes were completed in the preseason, which is very good. But he has, as as somebody who watches a ton of USC football, that dude turns the ball over like nobody's business. What unit is he coming out with? second okay i think because i you know what i don't know in the most recent game he may have come out with the first um i think he's gonna win that job because isn't bridgewater having a fantastic preseason yes they're probably gonna try to trade him oh are they and then they've got uh josh mccown too so um he's he's got like the highest ceiling but dude turns the ball over and that just kills in the nfl so so then dude number three Josh Allen from Buffalo, uh, he was originally one of my favorites. My dad and I watched like a Wyoming game, okay, um, and he th- just throws the ball so flipping hard. He was like, "Who is this dude?" He's like fitting into the tiny pockets, and we don't care when he throws an incomplete pass. We're like, "This guy is amazing." He has this just gigantic, huge arm and just just awesome. But I was as I was getting ready for the draft, I'd be like, "This is gonna be the guy." Like he, you know, if he gets with a good team, you know, or a good quarterback coach, you know, look out. That's when he had some unfortunate racist tweets that oh, came of course. right right before the draft. So, but does he stand for the flag? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I don't care. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> um, so he apologized and all that stuff, as the people are wont to do. Um, Maybe he could close for the Brewers. He. <laughs> He's gonna. Does that do close now? Is Hater close? No. Well, he might be. I. I have, honestly haven't watched the end of many games recently, but Canoeville's not doing well. Oh, okay. Well, in any event, uh, Allen is probably gonna start for the Bills. Okay. And he's been like in indis- like he's been inconsistent, but like when he's been good, he's been like real good. Then Josh Rosen of Arizona, super cocky, okay. super fan. This is the guy of, who- of the Cardinals or of Ariz- of Wildcats. Is that? Is he, is he, when you say Arizona, does that oh, mean he I'm plays sorry. for the Cardinals no, no. or the Wildcats? No, I'm sorry. He plays for the Arizona Cardinals. He's from UCLA. Okay. So, so he's from a school I don't like. Okay. Um, super cocky. This is the guy who put a jacuzzi in his, ho- or in his dorm room. Nice. Again. And, and like, like coming to America. Yeah. And he has like super outlandish opinions. Like college players should be, uh, paid and the president is an idiot so like this guy like i'm intrigued yeah. wish to subscribe to this newsletter <laughs> tell me more about this josh or about this josh rosen guy mm. um but he dropped in the draft because it is for the same reason that aaron Rodgers dropped in the draft where you have somebody who's outspoken about different things or has more interest than just football that is a big red flag and when you have someone who's like super cocky that is a red flag but we've learned from other quarterbacks like that they drop in the draft, but that just pisses them off. Like Dan Marino was like that. Well, and so. you know, there's there's that line of, yeah, you're cocky, but you also need to believe in yourself to accomplish those type of things. Like if you're, oh, I don't know, I might not be any good, then you'll probably play like you don't think you're any mm-hmm. good. So I, that's not an immediate red flag to me. No, it shouldn't be. And these guys, I don't think, I think none of them suffer from a lack of confidence. 
Josh Rogan just doesn't give a fuck. So he's going to tell you. <laughs> like, that's awesome. and that's And that's kind of like, that's the guy. Like, he is the best college quarterback. Remember when Bridgewater came out? And I was like, oh, crap, the Vikings got Bridgewater. And you asked me why I liked him. He was the best college quarterback. Rosen was the best college quarterback. And I think he's the most ready to win now and may have, you know, him or Bradford will have the, the, the highest ceiling if things go well for them. Um, the last one picked um, in the first round was Lamar Jackson from Baltimore. And he is the best athlete of the bunch. He's just super dynamic. And, you know, people are going to make all the comparisons between him and other running quarterbacks. I think he's everybody as good as Vic. Um, I, I never watched Steve Young, but those would be the two comparisons um, from college. And I really like him because he, like, holds himself. Like, he had a good game the first game. Uh, of preseason and everybody you know was like like the reporter was like asking him right on the field the first thing he said i had, I had an interception I, you know I, that's not you know he was very like sort of like focused and stuff like that and so great arm not sure about his his completion percentage and the rule but he doesn't have to step in right away he doesn't no yeah. he's got joe flacco so those are the five um which ones would you and you know i don't know you don't love the nfl but like which ones would, are you interested in i don't i don't love the nfl i love the vikings mm-hmm. and i don't watch college football other than with my partner because my partner loves college football uh, I'm very intrigued by the Arizona guy. Josh that sounds Rosen? perfect. Yeah, yeah that's he's, that's he's my right favorite now. Based on your descriptions, would be him a hundred percent. And the fact that he went to UCLA, which has to piss you off, kind of kind of just is another check in the yeah. I'm on board column. Though I couldn't give two craps about <laughs> UCLA one way or the other. <laughs> I did go to that campus once though, and it did looked, you really looked like a resort? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, USC is down in South Central, so they're definitely different. Uh, Different parts of the area and the world. Um, how do you think the Vikes are going to do? You know, I, I'm i excited. I have optimism. We brought a lot of guys back. We got that safety from the Bengals the other day just to make ourselves what the hell, stronger. I, you know, Cousins, Cousins has looked pretty solid through what we've seen. They have a tough schedule. Um, they play, like, at New England, at L.A., Rams, um, at Philadelphia, home against I, like they played i mean they, they were in the conference championship so you get a conference championship schedule you know the packers aren't going to be easy they uh they have a tough schedule so if they can do it they'll earn it but you know it's it's as confident as i felt going into any year you know in the last 10 years so i'll i'll take it how do you feel about the packers um if you got aaron Rodgers, you always have a chance I was excited about the run defense and about the defense because of Mike Patton and, and all the, the, the great the things. The lead singer of Faith No More? That's not Michael Patton. I thought you said Mike Patton. Oh, well, I do like Faith No More. <laughs> okay. And we can take And this Tomahawk there. or Mr. Bungle. Did you ever. Uh, who I've seen live. Have you really? Yeah, he opened for Tool. Holy shit. With Tomahawk. Did you ever. So uh, twice, actually. Did you ever. What's that RV? I think it's called RV. Faith No More has like a wonderful song about a truck driver who like hangs himself in the shower. And I do um, not know that one. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll find it and I'll link it to you. But anyways, um, man, they are just giving it like sieve. Like people are just running through the defense, and oh, so well. that's that's worrisome for me. They got rid of Jordy Nelson, which is probably a good decision. But you know, I mean, I wouldn't be a Packer fan if I didn't like needlessly get emotional to players like that leaving especially white um, receivers man well, they love the white receivers here set, settle down <laughs> because new england's got the market cornered well, on true. that um but you know if as long as you got rogers you got a chance and so we'll see how it goes i, I think the vikings are gonna win the super bowl that's how i think i mean i think they don't have a weakness and they took their quarterback position and they strengthened it and case keenum is not doing well in denver and here's the, here's the fact that we've never talked about this, but Zimmer is a Parcells guy. Yeah. And Parcells has the best coaching tree in sports. Well, and the, the funny thing is we talked about this with MLS, I think, a while ago, is um, about uh, Robin Frazier and about how he's the guy who always gets interviewed but never gets the job. And that's that's what and, how, and you talked about how much you love those guys, and mm. that's the guy you always want. Well, that's what Zimmer was. Mm. He was the guy who always interviewed and got passed over, and we've taken him, and... He's uh, the best coach they've had since I've been watching, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So it's it's exciting, but, you know, Super Bowls aren't won on paper, so we'll see what actually happens. Well, seeing as what happens, that was that that was the show. The, the greatest episode 
of Clone Wars in the greatest episode of the Kid Series of the Podcast. Episode 30. All right, Luke, where can the, the children find you? Uh, Luke underscore Nitzel on the Twitters. I'm at Maya Madrid at the Twitters. And together, we're at Kid Seriously, even though we're down Mark. I think he's joining us next week. Is he back next week? He's back now. He just wasn't up for being with us. Oh, he just quit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jet lag so hard when you're in Greece and Italy for two weeks. Oh, poor baby. I guess his wife will have to buy him another vacation. Probably. Bye, Mark. Bye. Bye, everybody else. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at Kids Seriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.